Right, so here's some friendly advice for those people that are a long way away and uh, might be thinking of doing the job themselves or people that are a long way away and maybe um, not quite sure whether to come or not. It could just be in an instance where you drive all the way to us, um, you know, all the way down the M1 and you get here and we say, ah, oh, yeah, that was easy. We could have just unblocked that pipe for you. So there might be some checks that you want to do before you come. And uh, it could even get to semi-professional or even professional level. So, you know, there's some garages out there, local garages you might be able to get it done by, uh, say if you're coming all the way to the other side of the country. So this is for you guys. Right, so safety first. Uh, you may have had a, one or two lights come up on your dashboard. Sometimes it could be the airbag light, for example. That's because probably there's water getting into some of your electronics. Uh, now, you need to be aware that sometimes this can be a little bit more serious than you think. If your airbag lights come on, then it's very unlikely that the airbag will be deployed in an accident so you need to get that checked out. Um, it might be that you do decide to drive it. I can't say for sure. We can't advise you whether to or whether not to. You know, we can't diagnose something from this distance away as to whether you've got water there or not. But usually, just as a few tips, uh, if you've got a little bit of water on the carpet, you might be thinking, oh, it's a little bit wet. If you can't see where that water's been coming from, the chances are it would have been filling up from underneath. So uh, there's a good chance that underneath that carpet there might be one or two electronic boxes um, and one of them could be the airbag control box. Now um, to get to it you've got to get the seat out so there's a plug under the seat and you've got to lift the seat up and out. Get somebody to help you do that, you unplug it, get a torch under there, unplug it, uh, lift the seat out, um, four bolts usually, get the seat out, get the trim off and get the carpet up and then you'll see where the water is and then potentially where this unit is. Um, if it's in water, obviously at that point you need to dry it and you can get the you know get a suction machine, pull out the water and dry it all and and then obviously fix your leak and do all that. But if that is in water and it's the airbag control unit, you need to be aware that that can't just dry out and go back in. You know, we wouldn't advise you do that because it might all work and you might be able to reset it but you don't know what it's going to do in the future. Uh, the same goes that if you speak to your dealer, you might be able to phone parts department and talk to them. Sometimes they're very helpful. They'll tell you what it is, and it could be you could buy one and get into your dealership once you've dried it all and fixed it and get that and change that unit, and then they'll reprogram it, maybe half an hour's labour or something, and they you know they put a new one in a dry one or and reprogram it, and off you go. Um, okay, so something else that might go wrong. Some customers have been here with uh, radios and amplifiers and that sort of thing so you might choose to dry one of those out because obviously at that point um, if it all starts to work then worst case scenario you could be driving down the road and your stereo goes off so uh, you could then just get the new unit but obviously if it's anything safety related then you need to do your homework and make sure that it's not something that could cause problems for you or indeed the next owner later on down the line so uh, you know I can't tell you every electronic box, but what I can tell you is that water does cause these problems, so you need to be able to deal with it. Right, so mould. Uh, most people don't realise quite how serious it is. Sometimes it can be very bad for you. I've had one or two people ring us over the years uh, while they've been ill, and they haven't put the connection together. We had one lady called us and said, um, I'm so ill, I can't get to you. Can you deal with me car? I'm, I've been off work for so much, so long. And I personally was the one that went to get it. And she came to the door, just gave me the key past the door. She was in a terrible mess. And when I opened the car door, I saw why. The car was full of mould and she'd obviously just about got better and went back in her car again. So, you know... <sighs> You breathe the stuff in and people think, oh, it's in the back, it's on the seat belts, it's wherever. But, you know, it gets into you. If you were to bash a, a cushion in your lounge and the sun's beating through the window, you can see all this stuff floating around. And 
that's how it gets into your system. So you're breathing it in and it gets into your nostrils. And, and you know, even one of our guys was ill once and the doctor sent us a warning uh, because he was ill and it was a mould related and we hadn't taken it as seriously as we should do. So cars with moulding, we completely blitz them with a, a product called Formula 429, uh, which is uh, made by ChemSpec and it's an award winning product. You can blast the entire interior. You'd have to buy a trigger spray. Um, but we've got machines for it and you know we'll get right under the carpets as well once we've got the carpet up and all the mouldy horrible water and you know all your seat belts and that and you have to clean it off as well and you know you've got to be aware when you're cleaning that you can't get it on your body and you know breathe it in um it goes on the seat belts it can often go on anything that's organic and it usually grows when a car's been parked for a couple of weeks so those of you who think oh it's all wet and i'll leave it and i'll deal with the car when i come back from holiday it's the worst thing you can do so you need to be aware that mold is can be unsafe and you know we know we've seen it on our cheese but it doesn't mean that uh, that it's all all right you know it can be a bit like mushrooms and toadstools so uh, to clean it off if you can't get the formula 429 that we use and um, uh, this you know it's a safe product you can use it on anything you need to if you're going in the shops to buy some you need to be aware that you want the one without the um, bleach in it um, the bleach can be labelled up as peroxide so read the label because obviously you don't want to be spraying ble bleach around so if you're going to clean it up you might just have a little bit of mould on one or two seat belts you need to clean it off properly you can't be driving along with the window open and thinking it's not going to get to you it whirls round in the wind we've had one or two people said to that that to us in the past well I'll just drive it to you and I've had people get out the car and say oh I've got that I've just driven here with the windows open you know you've got to get it out of the car clean it properly and if it's bad then uh, you need to you know be aware we can pick it up with a pick the car up with a lorry our lorry driver will drive to you and uh, he's got a mask himself he'll put that on drive your car onto the lorry and then we'll get your car here and we'll decontaminate it immediately it gets here we blast it with the antimicrobial product and kill the mold and then uh, you know and then it make it safe to work on okay so finding the leak uh, there are three kinds of main leak we categorize them you've got the basic leak which is something that may be something you can do yourself um, block pipes or you know debris blocking something usually or it might even be leaking um, you know somewhere like uh, the scuttle area underneath the bonnet sometimes you get all the debris in there and they block the pipe they block the outlets to that area in underneath and so you it spills inside that's one uh, the other one is inherent problems to the car so that is um, when potentially that specific car has those kind of problems so you might be able to find those online um, and it could be typically a Clio uh, or that has some roof problems and uh, the courses have problems under the pedals and golfs have problems under the bonnet for where the pollen filter housing are and you know they're typical problems that are relative to the car uh, the the last one is quirky problems we call them quirky problems they can be a bit more tricky uh, that could be welding car could could have been involved in an accident and there's a weld broken or it could be right behind the dashboard it could be that we've had them in the past where um, the car's got to be parked on a slope for the water to get in it kind of we've had them before where you've got to park the car with the two feet up in the air sort of that sort of angle and um, you know we've had the door panel off and the water runs down on the outside of the door and zigzags inside the door and then we'll go on to a speaker housing like the dome bit on the back of the speaker around that and then finds its way into the door uh, and if you park the car flat it won't come in because the water's dripping past the cowling inside the door and out of the drains at the bottom so they're quirky ones and I could tell you some stories of all sorts of quirky leaks over the years so uh, they're a bit more um, tricky and probably left to the professionals and you know we do a lot of those right so we'll start with the first one unblocking gullies debris that sort of thing so uh, let's use an example of the sunroof uh, you've got a pipe that comes from the sunroof and goes down the a pillar and into the wheel arch so you've stood on the seats you've got the sunroof open you're looking down at the gully and there you are you've got a little jug of water 
and you're pouring it into the recess area and seeing where it goes. It should ideally run to the corner and down the A-pillar on a pipe and then uh, down into the arch. So if you get a friend to look in the arch while you pour it, you should be able to see it go down and spill out and then dry the other side. And some cars have got them at the back as well. So at the back, you can't really get to them very well. Um, so, you know, you have to drop the headlining down to get to those. So it might involve your local garage. But if you think that's the problem, you can see the water's not going away with the car park with the nose up. Then you might be able to get a garage to get the headlining down and, and do that kind of thing. Uh, a couple of tips on here. You need to make sure that you don't unblock it uh, inadvertently and not realised that you've actually sorted out your problem and not you don't know you've done it so what what i mean by that is use a different example uh, say you're at the back light and you water in the boot and you think it's coming in through the back light don't unscrew the back light clean it all up put it back and um, what you've got to do is if you think it's coming in through the back light uh, take some padding off you know get somebody inside the boot with a torch and pour water on the outside of the back light with all the tailgate closed and make sure you can see it dripping and then somebody shout, yeah, yeah, it's coming in. And then you then take the light off and see where it's coming in. And be careful not to wipe away any evidence of where water might have been running. So at that point, then you can put the, the light back again. And then you know when you sealed it that it's not coming in again. So uh, going back to the first two, the basic water leaks, unblocking pipes, all that kind of thing. Uh, you can often find help on the internet. You might get it on Google, or you've got um, the obviously um, you've got uh, YouTube and some forums. And you know sometimes somebody will say unblock the pipe. So when you're unblocking that pipe, you've got to be careful not to push the pipe off. So if you're poking something down the hole in the corner trying to unblock it or you're pushing air down, a lot of garages do this, you get an airline and push the airline down, oh, that's all clear, the water runs away, but you're not realising that the, they've actually put pressure in that pipe and it's come off somewhere, potentially it's come off behind the dash somewhere. So you've got to be aware of that. You need to be careful not to push the pipe off or check the pipe is good at, the, at both ends of its connection. Sometimes you might have to take the trim off to get to that to make sure the pipe's clear and unblocked. Okay, so drying the interior of the car. Um, most people underestimate the amount of water in the car in the start. If it's not dripping and it, if it's gone in the boot, you can see where it is. And if it hasn't spilled over the threshold into the car, then you can dry it out in the boot. Yeah, that's relatively easy. If it's wet on the footwells, sometimes it can be both sides. Then the whole carpet, usually we take the whole lot out get the seats out and it's a major job get the whole lot out get the underlay up um, if it's only on one side sometimes you can undo the uh, seat bolts and you've got to get the plug out from underneath the seat and uh, then you can lift the seat out you need someone to help you do this and you need to cover the door panels sheet them up so that you don't mark anything when you get them out once the seat's out, then you take the trim off and get the carpet up. You'll be surprised how much water can be under there. Uh, you know, the older cars, are, you know, little old cars, sometimes the underlay can only be maybe an inch thick or sometimes an inch or two in varying places. But a more modern car with the foam, uh, you'd be quite surprised. It could be four or five inches thick in places. And you can have several gallons of water under there without you realising you know some of those big Audis uh, you know you can have four or five gallons or 20 litres for those of you from the metrics um, and it can be quite a job to dry them uh, you've got to get a suction machine there pull out as much water as you can and uh, and then get a blower under there you know in the old days we used to use a fan heater uh, we've got uh, three phase dryers now we've got uh, blowing pipes and you put the pipe in there and turn the heater on and blow three you know powerful hot air we've got eight inch pipes and uh, even that can take a number of days of blowing uh, to dry it so um, you know obviously you can dry it it just can take some time a uh, couple of tips on that one is if you unplug that seat uh, if you as long as you don't turn the ignition on then uh, sometimes you can put the seat back in and then the car doesn't know the seat's been out, if that makes sense. Uh, 
but if you turn the ignition on some people do you think oh i'll undo the window or whatever i'm going to do the car senses that the seat's been out and then the airbag light comes on and then once you put it all back together you need to be able to turn the airbag light off if you think you're going to buy a unit to turn it off they don't all work if you go on the internet and buy one for 30 quid then it won't work i can tell you that you can't buy them for 30 pound they'll just tell you your airbags on but it won't help you turn it off you've got to have something uh, professional that will actually plug into the system recognize that and turn it off so you know most garages have got them they charge anything i think we charge about 15 pounds to do it but some of them charge um you know a bit more than that sometimes they plug it in and just switch the airbag light off they'll check it of course the system does that but you know you've got to be aware that you know if the airbag lights on after that could be that um another reason why of course the airbag light might be on of course is the the unit or something's got wet and you know that needs to be replaced we talked about that earlier so here's four things you need to remember if you can unblock something make sure that you clean up the debris and it's not going to all block it up again so that's one number two is don't ruin your evidence you know if you're going to take a light off or something check that it's going to it's leaking first and remember the little water trails and little bits of evidence there so don't wipe it all clean and think you're doing a good job you need to see where that evidence is there could be more than one water leak that's another one so don't think you folded your arms good job for the day you found it and fixed it go back to the drawing board check it and make sure there's no water water often ends up in the same place so you've got a leak and it's coming in through the door panel and you've done all that and taped it and fixed it it might still be getting to that floor from another way and lastly uh, there's always more water than you think so obviously carpets get them up make sure that you dry it properly because it's very deceiving um, people um, you know they, they, they think it's going to dry on its own or put some help blower on it or the heater and you've got gallons of water under there it will never dry i mean we've had cars back eight months later and they're still wet uh one more little tip uh if you park in the car with the nose down and the water's uh down at the bottom at the front of the footwell doesn't mean to say that the water's coming in from the front so that can throw you out often it could be that it's coming in from the back or from the roof or anywhere but it always finds its way to the lowest point so I wish you all good luck with that.